Hey guys, welcome back to Sonar Sewing blah blah blah. Sonar Sewing Patterns Sewing Channel. Anyways, nailed that one. Um, today I thought that I would film this super quick tutorial on how to make this. Can you see it? There we go. It is a slim wallet. It has uh, four pockets, one front ID pocket, one middle pocket, and then one back pocket here. Comes together super quick. Um, it's a lot of fun to make. People do like these. I sell them on my table occasionally when I feel like making them. Um, but yeah, enjoy. So to start this simple project, we we're gonna cut out all of our pieces. And so the main panels are going to be the front and back, and this is going to be two and a half inches tall by four inches wide. We need two of those. And then you need, you can cut a third one of those, a two and a half by four inches wide. But then what I like to do is I use my protractor and I cut out a circular area here just so that the pocket looks a little bit different and then when the final wallet's all assembled it will look like that and it'll have that curved pocket in front. Um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to or you could do it at an angle or whatever you choose but that's how I do it. And then the other side um, is going to have the ID slot so I cut this piece a little bit smaller than the rest just because you'll see at the end this when this one is smaller we're gonna at the end after we're done sewing we will cut all of these down to match this and then we'll have nice smooth edges so this one is two and three eighths tall by 3.75 inches wide and then I have my piece of vinyl that will go inside of it and the vinyl is two and one eighth inch tall by three and three eighths inch wide. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut out my vinyl window. And the way that I do that is I take my ruler and I line up my long edge at three eighths of an inch in, and then I'm just gonna cut. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. So spin it, line it up at three eighths inch, all around. And I don't usually cut all the way because I, like you'll see how it's still kind of connected on the corners. I like to go back with my scissors and snip those corners just so that the rotary cutter doesn't go past and cut into this cork that will become, you know, the ID border. I don't want that to happen. So I just kind of give myself some guidelines and I come back and snip the corners with my scissors. And there we go. And then I'm going to burn the inside of the window. So I'm gonna burn the backing, but on the inside of the window all the way around just to trim any fuzzies that might have occurred. It's always super awkward trying to hold a cut out rectangle. And then I'm gonna take my glue, the Beacon Fabri-Tac, and I'm going to apply it to the back side of the ID window all the way around. And then I'm gonna lay my ID window. I'm gonna center it on all sides. And actually, I'm not gonna center it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it down first, then I'll show you. So I center it on both short edges, but on this bottom edge, I bump it all the way up as much as possible because with my machine, and yours might not have an issue, but my machine kind of gives me some guff when I'm sewing through multiple layers and one of them happens to be vinyl in between all of it. So let's see if you can, so you can see how high I put the vinyl here. So this will be my top edge. And then if you look at the bottom edge, you can see I left about an eighth of an inch gap there. But on the sides, it's centered, but there's still an eighth of an inch gap. So I am going to put something heavy on that and let that dry. 
And then the next thing that I'm going to do, just because I prefer to do it, is I'm going to top stitch just along the tops of my main body panels here. And then I'm going to top stitch along this curve as well. And then I'm also going to top stitch around the inside of my ID window. And then I'm going to let the glue dry while I do all of this first, but figured I'd show you since I'm here. But since, um, or whenever I'm going to top stitch my ID window, I'm also going to top stitch across the top of this piece as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make my divots. Again, making those, um, I just call them divots. I don't even know if that's what they're called. Those edges, those curves, whatever. Um, you don't have to do that. You can leave it squared off if you want to. But so I, when I top stitch this, I'm going to top stitch around the inside to get my, my uh, vinyl sewn down. And then I'm going to top stitch across just the top here. All right. So I'm going to continue to let this one dry while I top stitch just across the tops of my main panels. And if you have any questions about what thread I'm using, what needle, stitch length, anything like that, my machine, that'll all be in the description box below, so be sure to check there. So we have those three done. And then now I'm going to stitch around my ID window. I try to stitch super close to my cork edge here, um, a little less than an eighth of an inch, scant eighth, if you will, just to be sure that it catches the vinyl nicely. But you don't want to stitch too, too close because otherwise the stitch could slip and then the vinyl can pop out. I'm just going to trim those threads away and then you want to make sure that you trim along the back as well otherwise when people are putting their cards in they'll be able to see that thready mess back there. And then so you can see how close I stitched if it'll focus there we go you can see how close I stitched around it but not super duper close, but I caught all the vinyl on the back side. And now to finish off my top stitching, I'm just gonna stitch across this top layer or top edge. So again, just trim your threads, get everything straightened up, and then I will see you back over at the sewing table. All right, so because I chain stitched these, I'm just gonna snip them apart here. I chain stitched that one super close. And trim these long guys. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the two main panels wrong sides together, lining up their top edge. And I'm just putting glue on the very edge here because we don't want it to impede the cards when the cards are being used in the slot. So paying extra um, attention to line up that top edge. It's wrong sides together. Pretty simple. All right, so next I'm going to burn this thread. Next, I'm going to glue this curved piece on top of one of the sides. Right now, it doesn't matter which side. 
So just apply the glue around the edge and like before. And then on this one, you want to try to line up just as much as you can on all of the sides, really. Um, we will be trimming this in the very end. So generally, I like to try to keep my top corners nice and tight. Um, but sometimes my protractor, the way that I hold it, hold it is a little off and so this side's actually a little bit lower it doesn't even meet up all the way so whatever nobody says it has to be perfect as long as we're having fun all right so we've got those three together and now what you do is you flip the whole shebang over and then you grab your id window and this guy we are going to glue to this side and now You'll see, let me clip it. So you can see the gaps on either side here because we cut this piece shorter or uh, not as wide which again is intentional because that will allow us to cut these other three pieces to make them sit nice and flush against this ID window. And so if you want to, you can line up the top edges, the top edge of the ID to the top edge here. And then you'll also have a gap along the bottom that you can trim on too. Usually when I make these, I like to trim, or I like to line up, I like to leave just a little bit of a gap between, sorry, let me, just wanna show ya. I like to leave a little bit of a gap between the ID window and here, and that's really for no specific reason. Um, it's just preference. But I also want to be able to trim my bottom edge down, so on this guy, I'm gonna move it up so that I have that gap along the bottom as well. I am going to leave it just ever so slightly lower, but yeah. So anyway, so now I'm gonna glue that down. You don't have to glue it if you don't want to. Um, I, I'm like super, super precautious on these because Things shift and move and it always happens to me and honestly this order is going out to Australia and I want it to be impeccable I aim for impeccable with all of my orders if I'm being honest but I just really want it to look nice so I'm gonna glue this down sorry for the back of my head I did straighten my hair and wash it though, so there you go, you're welcome. It's going to apply some pressure so that it doesn't move. Now I can safely pick it up and clip it into place. And so again, you can see the gap here. And then I left that tiny gap along the bottom in this gap along this side. And when I stitch, I'm gonna stitch an eighth of an inch on the ID panel. And then at the end, I'm gonna trim it all up to be the same width. Okay, so this is the moment of truth. So I'm gonna stitch with the ID side up just so I can keep an eye on my stitch lines. But you have to remember that you do have this other pocket back here that we are gonna be stitching as well. So when you start stitching up here, be sure to backstitch well because you're going to be catching that corner of that curved pocket.
can't get that on there. So because you saw what I did when I pulled up my foot and I was trying to tweak this corner, I uh, messed up my threads here, so I'm going to have to redo that. So I'm just going to pick out the parts that I messed up. I'm just going to re-stitch. You can see right here where I had to pick all my stitches out, so I'm just going to re-stitch that section. So we're already almost done with this super quick project. I just am going to trim my threads here. Trim these guys. A lot of times it's easier just to burn them off if your thread will burn. Okay, so you can see now I've got it all stitched down. Here is the opening to the ID pocket. Here is the inside, and then here is that curved pocket. And so now what I have to do is I just have to trim off this excess here, and uh, it'll be all done. So let's do that. For this, I am gonna use my ruler. So I'm gonna get a nice straight edge here. I don't know if you guys have these little gummy things on your ruler, but it helps so, so, so much, especially for cutting cork. So, pro tip, even though I'm not a pro, just a tip. A tip from me to you. And so I'm just lining up the edge of my um, ruler with the edge of that ID pocket. And so there we go. Now we have one little ID front pocket wallet, whatever you want to call it, slim wallet. Um, so here's how it works. So because of that glue that's in there, a lot of times I'll take a, a card and just kind of move it around to unstick the glue. Same thing with the inside. And then same thing up here. All right, so here we go. So, ID area, grab some more cards. Front area. Middle area. Let's see. So right now it has five cards in it. You can see it looks fine. Looks good, looks good to me. And then, of course, it will stretch just ever so slightly with use. Um, another option is that in the very beginning, how I cut my ID window to be 3.75 wide, you can leave it at four inches wide, just like the rest of the pieces. You would cut four pieces at two and a half tall by four inches wide and then you could cut out your ID window doing using the same method you know holding your ruler in at three-eighths inch and cutting all around 
and then you would have a wider wallet and it would fit more stuff in it as well. So that's another option. Um, other options that I've done is I have cut all of my edges to be to match this like beveled area. Um, or you can round it. I don't really know. You can do whatever you want. But I hope that you, yeah, like it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that fun, quick. Was it fun? I don't know. It seemed pretty quick. Uh, but either way, I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial on how to make the slim wallet. Um, these are great for gifting, especially if you have a birthday or holidays or whatever. You can put a gift card inside of them. So something to think about. Um, something that I did not cover that I would normally do at the end of any finished project that I'm going to do after I get done filming is I'm going to burn all the edges and then I'm going to finish them with Eileen's Fabric Fusion Glue just to seal so that you don't get any of these like little fuzzy pieces here. So that's what I'm going to do next. But anyways, I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, leave me a comment. Give me a like subscribe i will leave my other free sewing pattern or sewing tutorial it's a checkbook cover that will be linked somewhere here in the rectangle and then if you click on the um round circle wherever that may be that is the subscribe button and you will be alerted whenever i put out a new video so anyways thanks so much for tuning in i hope that you enjoyed it stay safe out there and uh as always happy sewing <laughs>